Thank you for being here today. Today, um, Jesus and I are going to present a uh, chapter that we're working on for a forthcoming anthology, and it's about the 21st century border where we try to sort of bring together um, national uh, policy on immigration with uh, foreign policy uh, by the United States. And so, where's the paper? So on December 1st, 2018, the new uh, president of Mexico, as Mariana mentioned, Andrés Manuel López Obrador, took office. And in that same day, uh, he met with um, representatives from Guatemala, uh, Honduras, El Salvador, uh, to sign the Plan de Desarrollo Integral, the Plan of um, Integral Development. Um, days later, the, the foreign minister of Mexico announced that Mexico will pledge $30 billion to help deter um, migration from Central America. Yeah, and so with that being said, we you know we had some questions, right? Some 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 critical some some questions of critical critique, right? Uh, particularly, where is that money coming from, right? Where is the what is the funding organization? What is the what is where is the training coming from? Where wh who's going to provide the infrastructure? for this uh, enormous plan to limit migration, right? Uh, previous countries, previous Latin American countries, had not necessarily outspokenly declared um, uh, outspoken uh, interest in limiting migration. Why all of a sudden is there an interest in funding limiting migration um, across the Americas? So in this presentation, we are going to talk um, a little bit about the, the academic literature to understand this issue. Then we're going to talk about the, the, the methods and then um, some of the findings and, and conclusions. So academics have talked about the closing of the border. Um, uh, uh, Francisco mentioned the militarization of the border, the closing of the border. Um, but less has been less attention has been paid to the simultaneous opening of the border to certain people, right? Tourists, uh, the cosmopolitan kind of elite. Um, we have talked about domestic policy when it comes to migration, have this US uh, policies and laws regarding immigration shapes um, the movement of people, but less attention has been paid to how foreign policy uh, shapes movements across borders. So we we hope to highlight these um, these issues. Yeah. And, and as has been highlighted in some of the previous conversations, right, that the movement of people is not accidental, that there are um, legal policies that uh, that inspire, that serve as catalysts for movement of people, right? So like that um, U.S. Uh, foreign policy uh, increases the movement not only of people coming uh, coming up north, but then also some of the criminal criminal policies here locally impact the movement of people back into their native countries, right? So really quickly, we use uh, sort of data from uh, the Department of Homeland Security, the Department of Justice, um, uh, the GAO, and we'll focus um, the presentation on Plan Merida. So we start with the opening of the border. Um, uh, if we see the number of non-immigrant visas issued by the United States annually, we'll, we see that about 10 million visas are issued annually to people who can demonstrate economic stability in their countries of origin um, and, and, um, and in terms of pedestrians crossing along the U.S.-Mexico border, more than 100 million people cross the U.S.-Mexico border legally every year. Um, the peak was around 2000 where almost 300 million people were crossing the U.S.-Mexico border legally. So the border is quite porous for certain people. That's right, and so what we're seeing, or what, what, we're, what, what the, the data suggests is that there is still an ongoing invitation, right, to a certain type of immigrant, right? Uh, somebody that has the, 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 the resources to apply for the type of, um, uh, the type of certification, the type of uh, legal uh, crossing of the border, right? Um, which, which is very interesting, right? That, that we're still sort of like, that the, the American um, government continues to offer visas and grant permission, right, it continues to say, come on over, come on through, come on in through these visas, right? So the invitation of a people um, continues to exist. And the investment behind that. Um, so here's an example of um, Cross Border Express, CBOX, which is a new um, tunnel that connects the International Airport in Tijuana 
with a port in San Diego. So you don't even have to um, uh, go through the you know, regular checkpoints. Um, if you come to the airport, you, there's, a, there's, a, there's, a, there's an opening. I'll let you keep going. Okay. Um, so the, there's sort of like this opening for certain individuals who can mostly come from middle class. Um, but at the same time, there's, we know about the closing of the border, but we want to highlight that this closing of the border also comes at a time of dramatic changes in the, migra the, immigra the migration patterns. So um, my mass migration from Mexico has come to an end. Today, there are, um, there's a negative, net negative migration from Mexico, which means that more people from Mexico leave the United States and enter um, since 2014 around. Uh, more non-Mexicans are apprehended along the U.S. Both Mexico border than Mexicans. So what is all this hype about this border crisis, this border patrol being overwhelmed? Um, we, we know that uh, migration uh, characteristics have changed, and today the big focus is on Central American migration. And yet we also see that today Mexico deports more Central Americans than the United States. So we want to highlight yeah. what's happening. And so, and, and I could, before we jump into into that part, right? Like, so again, so think about it from this perspective. So uh, the U.S. And Mexico is doing a lot to to invite people to come over with legal visas, right? To to enter the country with travel or with limited visas, right? But at the same time, there's um, minimal investment in the court system, right? To process um, longer term stays, right? There's no there's no pathway from somebody to get, to enter with a, a temporary visa and then stay as a permanent resident. And yet we know that that is how most of the, uh, the folks that are, that, are, that are undocumented now that are coming from Mexico, that is how they're entering, right? So, you know, James Bolden once said, like, I don't know how to measure whether or not there's racism in your heart. I can just measure the outcomes of your actions, right? And so that's what, that's what we're using. We're saying, like, the outcomes of the actions Right, let us know that there is an intentionality to criminalize people, right? To criminalize people that come here with permits, but after they stay here, because there is no legal system for them to re remain, these folks uh, become criminalized. Yes, and so to highlight and go back to this initial puzzle of, of why is Mexico invested in stopping Central American migration, why is Mexico invested in deporting Central American migrants, we turn to foreign policy that in 2006, um, this is the amount of aid given from the United States to Mexico. In 2000, 2006, to, um, $66 million were given to Mexico. 2007, $65 million. 2007, $405 million. 2008, $432 million. There's a huge increase, six times. And this is through a Merida Initiative. And so, to highlight a little bit about the the uh, uh, Merida Initiative, there are like supposedly four pillars about um, that come with the Mexican, with the uh, Merida Initiative that seek to supposedly um, disrupt organized crime, um, institutionalize the rule of law in Mexico, uh, build strong and resilient communities, whatever that means, and uh, one of the pillars is to create a 21st century order. And about a fifth of all the funding for the Merida Initiative goes to these specific efforts. And what these, um, the, how the 21st century border has been defined is to, and I quote, facilitate legitimate commerce and movement of people while curtailing the illicit flow of drugs, people, arms, and cash. So these are this invitation for legitimate people who can prove um, that they are uh, worthy of permits to cross borders, while at the same time, uh, further policing and exerting violence on the poor people who are uh, described and labeled as illegitimate and illegal. Um, yeah. And so what, what we're seeing is that it's doing is that it, um, the, the, the Merida uh, project is allowing um, under these premises uh, the U.S. to go into Mexico not only provide funding but also uh, provide training on infrastructure, right? So provide training um, pretty much um, create similar patterns of policing that the U.S. enforces here, right? So ICE entering Mexico, creating an ICE-like agency within Mexico so that Mexico can then enforce um, really uh, immigration policies uh, from the U.S. down. Yeah. 
right? Or the values, not really the policies, but the values, right? This sort of like white supremacist, uh, imperialistic, market-driven, capitalistic values, right? Not necessarily political, meaning because of the, the laws themselves in the U.S. would allow for folks from Central America to apply for legal asylum, but um, instead, rather than allowing folks to come here, um, the U.S. is stopping people in Mexico through training, through funding of the Mexican government. Yes, and so we see, we sort of make the argument in this chapter that there's sort of the trapping of the poor, right? Even though apprehensions got, have gone down, and in part it's sort of this issue that Jesus touched on, that most people who enter the country are not the right, or they come authorized with visas or temporary permits and then overstay. So less people are coming really um, unauthorized. There's a decrease. But at the same time, there's an, a dramatic increase. It, that hasn't stopped the staffing of Border Patrol. The budget for Border Patrol has not slowed down. Um, even in, and we hear Mr. Trump right to, uh, demanding a wall, even though we know, again, that most people don't come unauthorized. And in, in the last uh, data is sort of this issue that uh, Jesus touched on, sort of like where the funding is, is going. Most of it, the, 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 the orange is um, Border Patrol, the blue is ICE, so um, sort of policing at the border, policing within the United States, and the red are um, uh, sort of funding for courts. So there's, there's no way to move people from these temporary permits to a more uh, permanent um, sta status, and those people who are coming to the border who need to go through the court system because they're applying for a a a a a asylum, they are, there's, there are just no resources. Yeah. And so, it's so, so uh, our argument is two-part, right? On the one end, we see the, the limited migration of folks from Latin America and Central America up north by the funding of the Mexican government and the development of agencies within the Mexican, within the, the country of Mexico, right? But then we also see the criminalization of people, um, mostly that come from Mexico, with visas once they arrive here, right? So it's the creation of a poorer working class. Most of these folks are do not arrive a self-defined poor labor working class, right? The, the simple fact that they were able to get visas would, would let us know that they're a part, that they have the resources. Yet when they, be, when they come here um, and become undocumented, now they're a part of a second class citizenship, right? So the development of second class citizenship here in the United States through these programs, uh, but also uh, the limitation of mobility of central immigrants uh, moving north. And so just to conclude, uh, again, we sort of touch on the opening of the border, the simultaneous opening and closing of the border and the trapping of the poor through various means, um, through not allowing uh, free movements of people, through creating these uh, legal categories that criminalizes them once they are here. Um, but that we want to sort of end with this issue of the consequences, right? Even though Again, migration um, has slowed down, at least for Mexico, uh, for, from undocumented uh, people or coming unauthorized. Uh, the, death, the deaths amongst undocumented migrants has not slowed down. Uh, more than 6,000 people have died since the uh, militarization of the border intensified in the 1990s. And, um, and just the thousands of immigrant children, like the, the ones that Maria talked about, have been reporting sexual assault. Not four, not 40 or 400. More than 4,500 children have reported being sexually abused. And the response of our government, of the United States government, is to say we're not responsible for the actions of staff. And so that, you know, obviously we, we, we want to highlight this, right, but we also want to highlight um, and invite for critical thought and critical perspective that while popular discourse is being focused on the creation of, the, of a border wall, right, like while that's part of popular mainstream discourse, right, and I'm not saying that that's not an important part, mm -hmm. that what we're seeing is that through the, the processes is that the wall is now, is not about the, the wall between the U.S. and Mexico, but instead the creation of the nation of Mexico as itself being the wall. Right? Turning a country into a wall, turning a country into a border, 
right? Expanding the border and all of the crimes that happen at the border, all of the violence that happens at the border, right? And, and, and it continues to be funded through public dollars, uh, continues to be expanded through um, U.S. sanctioned uh, training. Right. So, thank you. Thank you.